Yo, 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 guys, what's going on? My name is Hacking is Freedom, and welcome to the 10th episode of What Was Cut, a series where we take a look at what exactly was cut from our favorite games. Today, we're going to be talking about Need for Speed Underground 2. This is one of my all-time favorite car customization games. I spent so many hours getting this game to 100% as a kid, and it was so much fun. I've also spent so many hours just sitting around and making custom cars, because in real life, I can't draw anything whatsoever. So I feel like making custom cars was a way to show my artistic creativity as a kid. I even have two real old videos on this channel showcasing a few of my custom cars I made back on the PS2. Anywho, all the mods used in this video will be in the description for you to check out as well. Now, let's join the underground racing scene, and let's figure out what was cut. First up, we only have a few maps left over in the game's files, so let's go over those first. This first map is pretty well known. It's called Performance Tuning Track. It has an outer ring for testing speed, and an inner part for testing handling and drifting. This next map is called Replay Cameras, and judging by its name, I'm sure it was used to test the replay cameras. Sadly, everything here has been deleted, and it seems to cause some background errors in the game's engine. The dyno testing area is actually the entire Bayview Speedway track. Most of the time, small places like this are in their own world space or just pushed way under the map. This last map is just like the previous one, but with free roam, meaning there's no definitive track set. You can drive anywhere you want. Next, let's talk about the various cut customization options. I have no idea why some of these were cut to be honest, as most of them still fully work. Hood decals were originally planned to be in this game, just like the first Need for Speed on the ground, but they were cut for whatever reason. However, these decals can be re-enabled with the extra options mod on PC. You were originally able to paint the inside of your trunk a different color. This is probably a remnant of the Cut Car Show event. Cabin Neon was planned for this game too. It's still fully functional and can be enabled with the Unlimiter mod. There's a few sets of rims cut from the game as well. The first two are from Advin, and there's six from Oasis. The H4s and the teardrops can both be used on SUVs. You may also notice there's multiple tire sizes. This was pretty much just blocked off to the player, as it fully works for every type of rim, and it's even in the demo version if you use the debug menu. Also according to the debug menu and this icon, you were once able to customize fenders. I'm not really sure what the customization would have been, but if I had to guess, it probably would have been fender vents, because nothing else really goes on a fender. License plate customization was planned, but it seems it didn't get that far in development, as no builds of the game feature it. However, it is mentioned in the debug menu in the demo and retail version of the game. The developers were testing vinyl transformation at some point, which would have been a great addition to see in the final game. Only this icon remains. I guess it was cut because it didn't work well enough? Lastly, we have an icon for roof customization, not to be mistaken with the roof scoop customization. By the icon, it seems this would have been customization options for the actual roof of your car, like making it convertible or having a chopped roof or something like that. Let's now talk about the various changes done to the customization shops themselves. Starting with the body shop. At an earlier point in development, it seems the body shop was the place to get your split hoods, spinners, and door customization. Unlike the final game, where you get all that in the specialty shop. You can also see the background change here. All backgrounds in the demo are 2D, unlike the final game, where they're all 3D. The paint shop in the demo originally had some graffiti on the garage door, which was completely removed in the final game. The sign said paint shop in a graffiti style of text rather than just graphics like we see in the final game. The background was of course different. And finally, the paint seemed to be much more organized. Personally, I think this background looks hideous. I'm glad they changed it. The car lot is pretty uneventful. It has different loading screens and it only has two custom versions of the Mitsubishi Lancer we're currently driving. The performance shop didn't change all that much either. Just the background, the highlighted text was yellow instead of lime green, and the color of the upgrade bars was blue in the demo. 
However, at another point in development, it was also yellow before we finally got the orange color we all know and love. Before the specialty shop was a thing, it was originally just an audio shop. Only speakers and neon glow are visible in the background as well, which kind of supports this theory. There's also an unfinished shop that still has the original name in the demo. There's a purple light outside this parking lot in the demo. Usually the purple light indicates a garage, so maybe the developers were planning on making a system like Forza Horizon 2, where you can go to a car meet, choose your car, and race others. That would have been pretty sick to see in this game, to be honest. Lastly, there's another purple spot in this area of the demo, but I can't seem to drive any closer to it. This honestly looks like another meetup spot, but just smaller. It's the moment you've all been waiting for. It's time to talk about all the unused cars. These first six cars were all featured in the original Need for Speed Underground, but they were supposed to come back in this game as well. Those being the Subaru Impreza 2.5 RS, the Acura Integra Type R, the Mitsubishi Lancer ES, the Dodge Neon, which is my personal favorite by the way, the Acura NSX, and the Honda S2000. All these cars have data in the demo version, although they're highly unfinished. You can restore all these cars on the PC version with the Olympic Imports mod. However, some cars don't have certain customization options, such as bumpers, lights, carbon fiber, stereos, wide bodies, doors, and hoods. None of these cars can have any vinyls as well, although decals still do work. Here's some of my custom creations using these cars. The Dodge Charger RT was only seen in the Nintendo DS port of the game, but it can be added back to the PC version. I actually didn't know about this Charger until doing my research. It seems like a very out of place car for Need for Speed Underground to be honest. Did you know that the lock in the vehicle showroom is actually its own vehicle with its own unique ID and customization? Here's what it looks like fully customized. I didn't put rims on it though because it makes the wheels show up, which makes it look pretty dumb. With this customization, I wonder if they are quickly testing modification to motorcycles or something, because the placement of these customization options look too perfect to just be randomly affixed to the model. For example, the exhaust step is perfectly centered with the back of the lock, the mirrors are almost perfectly aligned with the keyholes, and honestly, the spoiler isn't in that bad of a position either. This honestly kind of looks like one of those electric unicycles you'd see driving around the suburbs or in bigger cities. There seems to be a Mitsubishi Lancer in a slightly unfinished state left over in the game's code. It's missing its front and rear lights, both mirrors, and the window tint was set to L3 black, which doesn't actually exist. This was actually an early version of Rachel's car before she got her 350Z. It's labeled as D-Day Player Car Old, and Rachel's 350Z is labeled as D-Day Player Car. Rachel also had another early car, that being this Mazda RX-8. This RX-8 reminds me of the one seen in Need for Speed Most Wanted, the original one from 2005. These next few cars I'm going to show I believe were all supposed to be used by other AI drivers, as all of them have AI somewhere in their name. So, this first one is labeled as 300 GT Blue, and this is basically a test car. Or the vinyl didn't load properly, and it's just using the default vinyl texture, which happens to be the debug vinyl. There's another 3000 GT labeled as 300 GT Orange, and it has some basic customization on it. This one can be seen as an AI opponent in the demo. This car is labeled as TT AI Preset 1, and it seems to only have the first set of performance upgrades applied. And once again, it uses the debug vinyl texture, so I'm sure it's just like the 3000 GT. This is either a test car, or the vinyl just didn't load. There's a Purple Infinity G35, labeled as G35 AI Preset 1, and this seems to be another car for AI opponents. Although I personally didn't see this car myself playing the demo. There's two Subaru Imprezas left over from the demo, one being labeled as Impreza WRX Blue, and the other is labeled as Impreza WRX White. For some reason, the white one doesn't properly show the color in the menus, but it does spawn in white while being driven by an AI. Both of these cars can be seen in the demo version as AI opponents as well. There's also two versions of the Nissan 350Z, one being labeled as 350Z Silver, and the other is labeled as 350Z Brown. I've personally seen the brown version as an AI opponent in the demo while getting footage for this video, but I never came across the silver one. There's another Mitsubishi Lancer that seems to be very close to Rachel's early version. It's labeled as Lancer V08 AI Preset 1, so again, this was most likely used by an AI opponent. All of the codes to spawn these cars are in the description if you want to check them out for yourself. Lastly, I just want to touch up on the changes done to Rachel's 350Z. At an earlier point in development, her iconic 350Z was incredibly basic. It used stock rims, spider bumpers and side skirts instead of the Mantis wide body kit, a different carbon hood, which honestly looks like the stock hood but just in carbon fiber, and I believe that is the Barracuda spoiler, while the final game uses the Lex 42 spoiler. 
And finally, in the Japanese version of Need for Speed Underground 2, Rachel's 350Z is black, with a unique golden vinyl. It looks pretty cool, but nothing can compare to the iconic one. The next category we're going to be talking about is all the various temp textures left in the demo version of the game. I may actually be the first person to document these, as I don't think anyone has dumped the textures of the PS2 demo before. These textures may not have been seen since the launch of the beta, which was 20 years ago, and I can't seem to find any information on temporary textures besides the one we all know about, which is the one we'll talk about first. In the Fort Union district, there's a hotel sign with two beta textures reading Remove. I personally have no idea how this got left in the game, as I originally thought the Remove text was on the Light Effect texture, but no, it's on the actual sign texture. Also, I find it pretty strange that this texture is broken up into five separate textures, rather than just being one texture reading Hotel. This is why you only see the Remove text on the L and E of the sign. In the Stadium district, there's a few trees that support this texture reading Rescale Texture Size. This texture here kind of looks like the top of a church, but there's also another texture that has the same color palette. Perhaps these two go together? There's a random door texture that looks like it belongs to some sort of office building or retail shop. This is the only texture that has unique developer text reading Remove in pink with an exclamation point. None of the other textures have this exact combination, so I guess the developers really wanted this texture removed. This next one I'm not really sure what it's supposed to be. It looks like either a fence or a grate for something. This texture here looks like a building's floor or wall. This texture is also very similar to another one in this list. Another one I'm not really sure what it's supposed to be. I'm assuming it's just a standard wall texture. Although the slats in the top of the texture kind of make it look like a medieval castle wall. This industrial building is 64 by 64 so the quality is terrible. I don't even know where this texture was used in the beta as I didn't even see it. These two textures were used as windows for various shops in the beta. You can see one of them here. If you're wondering about the text, the one on the left reads Redo, while the right one has the standard Remove text. This building texture has Redo written in the dead center. You can see it in the beta here. It's located in between the Hotel Plaza and the South Market districts. The redone texture in the final game doesn't look much different though. In the beta, all billboard grates, which is basically where you walk in real life, have this temp texture. The final version is much better, obviously. I'm not really sure what this texture is either, but if I had to guess, it looks like a pavement texture of some sort. The final game's version doesn't look any different, but the file size is bigger. This texture here was used as a floor and as a wall in the beta, so I'm not really sure what the true purpose was for. It looks more like a floor to me. Here you can see it being used as a floor, but there's another building that's entirely made out of this texture. You could find this building in the Fort Union district. The final version of this texture seems to be darker and high resolution. I'm assuming this texture is supposed to be siding or possibly the roof of a building. The only difference being the resolution was doubled in the final. Lastly, in the Coal Harbor District, the gas station had a temporary texture that actually looked pretty good. You can see it here. And while still on the topic of textures, let's go over the various textures that have been changed from the demo. The game's logo was pretty dull in the demo, completely lacking all color, and the two was in a different position. For some reason, the Motel Inn actually had a unique name in the demo, that being the Morgan Inn, and that sounds so much better than just Motel Inn. Although, I'm sure this was cut for legal reasons, as there's an actual Morgan Inn in San Simeon, California, which if you didn't know, Bayview is based off of cities in LA and California. All highway signs are in a much more basic state in the demo, just showing the name and the arrow pointing to the destination. All billboards around the highway use this for lease texture. I find it pretty funny that the developers decided to add a custom texture to unfinished billboards specifically saying for lease. <laughs> like it's real life or something. The loading screen in the beta was completely different as well. Here's the comparison. The middle car in the background of the demo's loading screen is actually the cut Subaru Impreza we spoke about earlier. The barriers stopping you from accessing certain parts of the map were quite different too. In the beta, they looked more like actual road barriers, with white lines painted on them and text reading Open November 2004, while in the final game the barriers were red and black with a basic lock design. The barriers while in a race are a bit different than the final games as well. In the demo, they seem to use a much faster animation and there's an actual concrete barrier on the ground too. The final game scrapped the concrete barrier and changed the animation. Lastly, in the demo while in a race, the track was outlined in a light blue color, rather than the basic white outline we have in the final game. Next up are the massive changes done to the map itself. Get ready, there's quite a lot to talk about. This map here is one of the earliest I can find, and honestly looks like a GTA style map. It's basically concept art, but you can see the developers didn't stray too far from this original design though. The biggest difference is obviously the most noticeable. This whole area up here is labeled as Desert Drive, and it has a bunch of unique things that would have been pretty cool to see in the final game. In the middle of Desert Drive, there would have been a wind turbine farm, as these icons here are of wind turbines, and underneath that is labeling that says wind farm. 
Just down from that is an area labeled as Sand Dunes, and I'm not really sure how that would have played out in a game that's based around underground street racing, but it still sounds pretty cool. Just to the right of the sand dunes, there seems to be a small town. I unfortunately can't read any of the labels here. If you have any idea on what they say, please comment down below. Lastly, for Desert Drive, the radar dish up at the top seems to be labeled as 5211. I'm not sure if I'm missing something here, or if that's literally just some random name. At the bottom of the map in Cole Harbor, there were once plans for you to be able to access a racetrack of sorts. I wish I could read the subtext here. It may tell us what type of racetrack this was supposed to be. Fort Union was originally called Old Town. City Center is pretty much non-existent. South Market originally housed two totally different districts, those being the Financial and Entertainment Districts. Beacon Hill doesn't seem to exist either. The only main labeling we have is this text in red reading Mall. Jackson Heights was originally broken up into two districts, those being Forest Drive and Estate Homes. And lastly, this island close to Beacon Hill is very strange. I don't really see why this was even put in the map as it seems to have no purpose and no labeling even in the concept art stage. I'm sure there's still stuff to cover in this map like the train tracks and stuff, but let's move on to the others. This version of Bayview was the first version to hit the game, just after the concept stage. You can still see quite a lot of similarities to the concept map though. The biggest change is obviously the removal of Desert Drive. It's also fun to note that Pigeon Park is still absent in this stage of development. Oddly enough though, the stadium road is on the concept map, but it's not in this version. Other differences are just road layouts. The second version of Bayview introduced Pigeon Park, albeit in a very basic state. The stadium road came back as well. Other differences are just road layouts, but one I do want to highlight is this section here. Talk about spaghetti roads. The third version of Bayview didn't have that much change from the previous version. Mainly Pigeon Park got more refined, the stadium road was removed again, Jackson Heights got those super squiggly turns up by the TV tower, and the layout of Cole Harbor was slightly altered. This fourth version of Bayview was featured in the PS2 demo, and it's very close to the final game's map. A lot of the spaghetti roads are still here though, however Pigeon Park now looks fully complete. Some roads got changed in Beacon Hill, the airport was completely redone, and Jackson Heights received its final touches. And this is the map we all know like the back of our hands. However, there were a few changes from the demo to the final. Mainly, those awful spaghetti roads are gone after so many complaints from beta testers saying it was too confusing, and the airport got an additional turnoff on each side as the demo only had one. As we come to the end of the video, let's talk about the various oddities I found throughout the game. Did you know that hot air balloons were supposed to appear in the stadium district? I'm not really sure why the developers cut this as it makes the area look so good, especially at night. However, if I had to guess, this was most likely cut for performance reasons. I'm sure you saw this in my previous footage, but all the shop icons were originally square. I think this was done to make the shops more distinguishable from the races, just to make the demo more easily understandable. The demo version only had this skybox, while the final game uses all three for depicting various times of the night. I'm sure the developers wanted to show this off in the demo, but it was most likely not ready in time. In the Hotel Plaza district on the demo, a neon sign reading lounge has been completely removed in the final game. I'm sure this was done to keep the E rating. Also in the demo build, the song that plays in the main menu is the Keys to Life vs 15 Minutes of Fame by Atmosphere, rather than the iconic Riders of the Storm by The Doors and Snoop Dogg. I'm assuming the developers didn't have that song ready for the demo quite yet, so they just used that song by Atmosphere instead. This texture here is of the player model, which is the silhouette you see when driving your car. But for some reason, there's two other versions. I believe this smaller one on the left side is the driver silhouette for NPC traffic cars, but this other one in the middle I have no idea. Possibly it was for AI opponents and races? However, I thought they used the same textures as the player silhouette. Let me know in the comments. Do you remember that gorgeous looking city skyline in the background when coming down from the top of Jackson Heights? Well, this is the texture. I gotta say, the developers did a really good job at making this look realistic in game. Every race in the demo had its own misty smoke emitting from the starting location of the event. This was completely removed in the final game, again, most likely for performance reasons. I drove around the demo map for a while and it seems the developers had all the shop locations already planned out, except for one. The body shop in the Hotel Plaza district located in the S-Bend turn seems to be a very late addition to the map. The demo has no indication of a shop being here, as to where the final game has a full body shop location added. I also may be the first to document this as well, I don't fully know what I did to trigger this, but looking over my footage, I was just driving around with a no collision sheet, and I happened to stumble across a feature that used to be in the game at an earlier point in development, but I managed to re-enable this in the vanilla retail game. If you drive your car to where I am, which is in the Fort Union district, drive slowly through this wall and just let your car freak out and respawn automatically. And it's as easy as that, you should now see the colored fog. I believe the code for this is based off this map here, but it's kind of broken in the final game. So it seems the Fort Union, Hotel Plaza, and the South Market districts all use the city center's color, which is orange. Beacon Hill uses green. 
Jackson Heights uses a blue fog, which I absolutely love. And Cole Harbor had a typical brown, smoggy color. I unfortunately couldn't trigger this while driving around, though. Lastly, there's quite a few interesting vinyl names that I don't think appear in the final game. For example, it seems there were once plans for a Rob Zombie vinyl, which would have been absolutely sick. There's also a strange vinyl labeled as Stuff. I wonder what that one was supposed to be. And that's all I have for Need for Speed Underground 2. I know this was a long one with a lot of information, and I want to personally thank you for making it to the end. Last week was pretty crazy for me, hence why I didn't get to upload. Here's a quick breakdown if you're interested. So basically my car needed to go to the shop, so I brought it to the shop. The mechanic basically told me it would be in the ballpark of about 1600 bucks for the repairs. I tell him that's fine. He then calls me back and he's like, it's not worth doing. And I'm like, what? <laughs> like, I literally told him it was fine, and like, he basically refused to do the work and refused to take my money. Like, uh, like what mechanic refuses to take $1,600, like, dangling under their nose? I, I don't understand. That's crazy. Anyway, I happened to find another car for a great price, so I just bought that instead. I also managed to snag an Xbox One development kit, and I have the XDK transfer device coming in the mail, so a video on that will definitely be coming soon. Also, if I sound different, it's because I managed to finally upgrade my mic after, like, eight or nine years of using the same basic blue snowball with no pop filter. So I finally upgraded to this bad boy here. Anyways, hopefully the upload schedule can get back to normal after all that craziness. And yes, I'm still planning on uploading that early build of Disney Universe. Anywho, if you have a suggestion for the next What Was Cut episode, please feel free to comment down below. With that being said, thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next one. Peace.